Warren Buffett, in his discussion about the annual report, emphasizes the importance of not overpaying for even wonderful businesses. He highlights the risks of buying at high prices and the need for investors to focus on the quality of the business itself. I, I'm glad you brought up the subject of the annual report because it, it um, what I was doing in the annual report is I had talked about uh, Coke and Gillette as being the inevitables and what wonderful businesses they were. And, and uh, uh, I thought it appropriate, particularly the report goes to a lot of people, that they would not take that as an unqualified buy recommendation about the companies because they're, they're absolutely wonderful companies run by outstanding managers. But you can pay too much, at least in the short run, uh, for businesses like that. So I thought it was only appropriate to point out that no matter how wonderful a business it is, that uh, that there always is a risk that you will that you will pay a price where it will take a few years for the business to catch or for the for the business to catch up with the stock that the stock can get ahead of the business and i don't know where that point is with those companies or any other companies but i did say that i thought that the risks were fairly high that that, that situation existed uh, with most securities in the market including companies such as inevitable but it was designed to be sure that people did not take the remarks that i made about those companies and just take that as an unqualified buy recommendation regard regardless of price we have no intention of selling those two stocks. We wouldn't sell them if they were selling at prices considerably higher than they are now. But, but I didn't want particularly relatively unsophisticated people to see those names there and then think this guy is, 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 is touting these as a, a wonderful buy. Generally speaking, I think if you're sure enough about a business being wonderful, it, it, it's more important to be certain about the business being a wonderful business than it is to be certain that the price is not 10% too high or 5% too high or something of the sort. And uh, uh, that's a philosophy that I came slowly to. Uh, I originally was incredibly price conscious. We used to have prayer meetings before we would raise our bid. And I originally was incredibly price conscious. We used to have prayer meetings before we would raise our bid in eight or, you know, around eight. I mean, we, we, we'd miss things because of that. And uh, uh, so. What I said in the report was not a market prediction in any sense. We never try to predict the stock market. We do try to price securities. We try to price businesses is what we try to do. And, and, and we find it hard to find wonderful, good, average, substandard businesses that, are, that look to us like they're cheap now. But uh, you, know, you don't always get a chance to buy things cheap. Char Warren Buffett emphasizes the importance of not overpaying for even exceptional businesses like Coca-Cola and Gillette. He wants to caution investors against blindly buying stocks solely based on a company's reputation. Buffett acknowledges that he doesn't attempt to predict the stock market but rather focuses on pricing businesses. He also reflects on his evolution from being overly price conscious to recognizing the significance of the quality of the business itself. Ultimately, his message is that while it's crucial to be price conscious, the quality of the business is paramount when considering investments. Well, I certainly agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing we can confidently guarantee is that uh, real inflation-adjusted returns from investing in a standard collection of stocks will be lower in the long-term future than they've been in the last 15 years or so. This has been an unprecedented period, and there will be some regression toward the mean in average returns from investing in the stock market. American business has done extraordinarily well in the last decade plus, and that's a huge a huge plus for securities uh, the, the, because they just represent pieces of those businesses. Interest rates over the last 15 years have fallen. That's a big plus for stocks. Anytime interest rates go down, the value of every financial asset goes up in, uh, in, rational, uh, in a rational calculation. Both of those factors have combined in recent years to produce uh, conditions that, that uh, enhance the true value of, uh, of American business. Uh, but those are pretty widely recognized now. And, and after a while, uh, Ben Graham always used to say you can get more trouble in investment with a good premise than with a bad premise. 
because the bad premise will shout out to you immediately as being fallacious, whereas with a good premise, it'll work for a while. Uh, you know, businesses are worth more money if interest rates fall and stocks rise, but that eventually the market action of the securities themselves creates its own rationale for a whole, for a large crop of buyers, and people forget about the reasons and the mathematical limitations that were implied in what they, uh, and what got them excited in the first place, and after a while, rising prices themselves uh, alone will keep uh, uh, people excited and cause more people to enter the game, and therefore, uh, the good premise after a while uh, is forgotten, except for the fact that it produced these rising prices, and the prices themselves take over. He, he wrote about that in the connection with the 1920s when Edgar Lawrence Smith in 1924 wrote a, a fine book on why stocks were better than bonds and that was sort of the sort of the Bible of the of the bull market of the 20s and it made sense if you paid attention to a couple of the caveats which were in in um, uh, Edgar Lawrence Smith's little book which were related to price but people tend to forget about the importance of the price they pay as the experience of a bull market just sort of dull, dulls the senses generally. In conclusion, Warren Buffett's timeless wisdom reminds us that while market conditions and enthusiasm may fluctuate, the fundamental value of a business should always be at the forefront of our investment decisions. His philosophy underscores the enduring importance of prudent investing, even in the face of market exuberance.